welcome everyone. Visitors are always welcome at our board meetings so that the meeting may proceed uninterrupted. Please silence your, all your electronic devices, please. Thank you. that we are presenting to you, this is the one that is preventing us from moving forward at this time. Uh, as we look at some of the consequences of our of delaying, uh, we have uh, right now we are putting ourselves about four weeks behind and where that may come into play is with some of the scheduling that we've done for January 20th as well as the uh, where we can store the bleachers as they're planning to deliver them. 
Robinson partition that used to span the gym to create two halves of the gym. And to protect our students, we would add green mats to the walls that would function as an additional layer of protection. Uh, the last two, and the reason that those are change orders is because we would be changing the size of the gym and then all of those other things would have to happen. We'd be changing the size of the, the drawings of the paint. All of those things would then have to happen in order to make that work. Um, in addition to that, we have two contracts that would enhance the gym overall. One contract with Unipro Painting to paint the gym and one with Schiffler to install controllable LED lighting. You can see the pricing of the change orders here. The change order, we would call change order number two, would be the second change order for the White House. And that would have a cost of $33,197 to install the new backboards and remove the partition. And then to add the protective mats with installation would go as a change order to Nike at $26,777. Painting contract for the entire gym, uh, paint all areas and trim, uh, black stripe, that would be $21,045 as an additional contract. And the LED lighting would retrofit 57 lighting fixtures with state-of-the-art control LED lights. And that would be $25,485. And it's important to note here that this lighting will offset our energy costs. So one of the reasons to do these now would be to take full advantage of that cost savings over time. And because we can do this work while there is no floor, so we prevent damage or don't risk damaging the floor that we just put in. This is a statement from our coaches. Um, they highly recommend that the floor should be 94 feet instead of 84. Uh, their claim is that every court that we play on, all of our competition, all use 94 feet floors so that when you come to our home gymnasium, they're playing on a smaller court, which means they're more conditioned they're faster to get down the field, whereas we aren't used to that. And that takes away the home field advantage, uh, especially in our LEL competition. So really, why now? This is a unique opportunity for us to make the gym a better experience for this community for years to come. The risk of damaging the new floor is lessened by doing these change orders and enhancements before the floor is fully installed. And then I wanted to point out the longevity of use. So we've been doing master plan facilities planning, and even if we consider a new gym through that, the process of the high school right now is phase two. And that would estimate from TDA a minimum of eight years before we would be able to have a new gym to play in. In addition to that, a new gym based on our current enrollment would be 2,000 square feet less than the facility we have now. So in making this gym a better product now, we could potentially set ourselves up to have this for a lot longer time build this gym into our master plan process. <coughs> Overall costs, and obviously the number in red is the one that we are required to move forward. The rest of these being enhancements we can do. Uh, it would be a lot harder to do the backboards and the lines after the fact, but mats, painting, LED lighting, you know, those can be done later. It's just that if we postpone them, um, we would have additional risk of damage and the jobs would be a little bit harder for us to do because we would have to work on the brand new floor. So that is a summary of the change orders and the enhancements. I have uh, Bob and Wayne here and myself to answer any questions you may have.
construction and um, in advance. Was there anything else that was? Go ahead. Uh, hi, um, Wayne and I can talk about that. I mean, Wayne's company has started has done the demolition of the old wood sleepers and the old what was left of the concrete, and Wayne has prepared the floor. Um, some of the floor, I think I tried to explain last time, was up and down, up and down, and some of the top, the higher parts were, were taken down somewhat because the grout was sticking, so he's taken those down. So you patch the holes that were caused, that were, that were uh, happening because of the getting rid of the high spots. So it's all ready for us to make it, hopefully make a decision to move forward so we can, he can finish prepping the floor so we can get the wood floor ordered. That's all. I mean, not all. It's been it's been about a month's worth of work, right, Rain? Yeah. Right. yeah. And the gym, the whole upper part of the walls have been cleaned and washed now. So if you're if you're ready to paint, if you're ready to paint if you choose to, if not, the clean in there. The whole ceiling has been cleaned, all the ducts have been moved out of there. It's ready to go for our next phase. Where does the um, bleachers come into effect? The the bleachers were scheduled to be delivered in uh, I believe it's the first week of December ish. So if we're, we're now delayed two weeks, and if we wait another two weeks, we'll be delayed a full month. So the, bl the floor might not be done. That's, that's where this happens. The floor might not be ready to put the bleachers in yet. So was the bleachers a part, I mean, was it, I know that, was it bleachers? Did we approve the bleachers to be changed? Yeah, yeah, we did, right? Yeah, yeah, you guys have two contracts. Okay, that's one with good. One with the uh, White House Construction to okay. do the floor. Gotcha. And a separate one for the bleacher company. Okay. And the reason we did that is, honestly, it was to save money. We, you know, we didn't have to, quite honestly, Wayne didn't have to add a fee to handle the bleachers. They're doing it separately. So that, it's just, it, it, helped, I, it saved you guys a lot of money. And so was it, nece well, it, it, it was it necessary to get new bleachers to for this? Uh, yeah, I think. So. I mean, they were they were not meeting ADA standards. I know that. They what, were just, what, 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 railings? What yeah, railings, hand, hand, uh, ramps to get up to them. They you know they were they were left up above the floor. <coughs> so the new ones will have a different way of, of meeting handicap requirements. I, I don't know the reason, sir, why they were asked, but we were just asked to give you guys drawings to replace the bleachers. I never <laughs> knew that it was out of compliance. The bleachers were out of compliance and didn't meet the specs. Yes. Well, how, how long ago? So it's always been out of compliance? No, no, no. The handicap standards came into effect, I believe, in the 80s, like late 80s. So I'm saying, so since the 80s all the way up to now, we, <coughs> we've been out of compliance. To, to, to a mod, but you didn't have to replace them. They were the existing. They were grandfathered. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. it, it, unless an insurance company tells you they're they're uh, not functioning or, or not structurally sound for the people to sit on them, they, school districts typically don't replace existing bleachers. It's, it's just so many things are happening at once, and I understand the gym floor, but it's just so many. I, so many, I guess the fact that since the gym floor is being done now and all of these factors come to play and, and this would be the time to do it, but there's just so many different things that's happening right now that it's a huge cost factor that brings into play. Right totally now. understood, yeah. Again, you could do these things as James mentioned, you could, you could hold off on doing the enhancements um, at a later time, it's just you know it's going to be more difficult. It will interrupt your schedule of games and and, and 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 quite honestly, you know how prices just keep going up. So, understand. Um, but you could do those things at a future time. Understand. Understand. That's all the questions I have. Yeah, you answered a few of them. Um, so if you're looking at option one, two, and three on the floor. Yes. Um, I'm assuming option one is the best option. No, not necessarily. Okay. I wouldn't call it the best option. I, they're all they're all equal options. Okay. I would say they're all equal. It's just a, it's just a price point, really. I mean, it happened in that order because the first thing I said, I went out to my flooring contractor and said, what can we do with a floor that sits that far out of level? Okay. And that was just the first person I went to. And then the third option was I went to different contractors, or second and third option, I mean, other contractors to do actually floor levels. Because 
the, the four quality in terms of level. The four is not changed. Yeah, it will, no. it will yeah. be the same so one, two, or three. So it doesn't affect anything on the quality of the floor. Yeah, they're all athletic floors. They're wood, beautiful wood, maple floors. They're going to have a, um, a cushioning factor underneath of them. And that's for the, that, Jane, that's for the, even if it's a 90 foot, four foot. Yes. Correct. So the floor doesn't change, the paint lines, the paint change from 84 to 94, yeah. which then makes us change some of the peripheral. They're basically the basketball hoops. The old ones you have don't fit. You know, the, they were, they were bolted to the floor, you know, and if we expand out, we don't have the room for them to sit properly. So if you do the floor, you have to do the back floor. Correct? You don't have to do the mats, you don't have to do the painting, but you have to do the back floor. Correct, or else you would not be able to walk behind Correct. the... If, so those if, you, expanded, if you expanded your court, Correct. You, right. you the floor is the same. The floor is the same. It's just, it's just striking. So when, when we look at, at not moving on this, we're looking at another two weeks, where does that put us up to? Construct schedule-wise? Yeah. We're at least four weeks out, minimum four weeks. It could be six, it could be eight at that time. I don't know how busy the contractors are mm -hmm. to get between now and then. Mm -hmm. So we know we're a, we'd be a minimum of four weeks out. We pushed it back four weeks. Uh, but it could be longer. Until I actually give them a contract, they won't commit to me with a time frame of when they can be on site. So we could be looking at mid-January, February, we don't know. Uh, Mid-January was our completion date. Right now, we are looking at mid-February, probably into March somewhere. Okay. So, so the entire, <coughs> entire high school season in our gym is pretty much shot. Yes. Okay. Because, because we're delaying. Um, I, I, eventually, we're going to have to make a decision, I, at least on the court. The enhancements are great.
you know, we, we we have talked a lot about rebuilding, but then most recently we've been talking about some renovation because what we have to keep in mind is if we um, build new, the state will not help us pay for an auditorium, a natatorium, any outside facilities, athletic facilities, they don't pay for. There are a couple other things. So what we've been talking about, like this gym, for example, or the auditorium, if we want to preserve, or the natatorium, we could build around that. So if we want to renovate, we could keep this gym in existence and build around it if we wanted to. Mr. Meyer, and I'm just speaking for this panel. I know that you put all of this information in your prior notes. But for me, and I, again, I can't speak for them, but for me, I think it would have been a lot easier for me to understand and to digest this had you put it in the prior notes, come and explain it piece by piece and not have us, not have me to try to vote on something the same day. This <coughs> information for the future. I mean, this was a, this is a lot of money for us to be spending at one time. And as I look at this, you pick the 49,000 uh, option one rather than option two or three. So can you explain that in the budget on the back? Certainly, so that number um, has the asterisk that says it's pricing not to exceed. And that was because Dwayne has still been looking at options for us. So the most expensive option was put on that list so that we know that the money would not exceed that amount. So as we continue to find better options, we wanted to present them all and give Wayne the opportunity to, to continue to look without having put a number in front of you that, that would have went back to option one if, if two or three didn't work out. Okay, thank you. I have one more question. Okay. We have these change orders. What was it before? I'm sorry, maybe I just forgot. What, what, how, what did we bid this out for before? Before this, all this stuff happened. I'm just curious. I can't remember. It wasn't, it's been so long. This is
mean, that's I, I don't know the answer. Oh, you to don't it. know? Okay, yeah. go ahead. I don't know how the answer is. Yeah. But I these are new additions from the time yeah, this year. Yeah, I also don't know these recommendations came to me from the athletic department and as we were looking in our pre construction meeting to cr basically create a, a better product. If we were going to okay. invest the time and materials into this gym now, then this was an opportunity to provide the enhancements. So I don't know why it wasn't included in the original spec, but that is how it came to be presented to me today. Well, I would think that the business manager was, was, was should have been or was actively involved during his time being here to be able to have some input regarding the needs and wants before they exit. I understand why these things were brought up during those phases uh, while they were here. That's my concern. My second concern is this is great. This needed. I understand. Presentation was great. I, I, I get it. The problem that I have with this is that we're, we're putting and focusing on this right now because of the time <coughs> timeline with the floor and the new construction and everything. But well, what about our existing facilities? That's the problem that I have. That's the problem that I have with this thing right now. What about the existing facilities? We have students at the high school, ceiling falling in, roof leaks, carpet looks like I don't know what, uh, lockers needed to be painted, these kids need, they deserve better than this. This is what's happening right now. And they have to go to school each day in that type of environment. So I understand what's needed right now in order to move forward. But what about the existing facility? Now, Dr. Dr. Um, Selico, I had mentioned it to you uh, last week uh, and expressed my concerns about the facilities. Uh, has there been any movement regarding the uh, roof? The ceiling tiles need to be replaced based on the leaking of the roof. Um, the carpet that needs to be taken care of. Lockers need to be painted. Has anything, has, it, has, has there been any movement regarding those items that I mentioned to you last board meeting? <coughs> Not that I'm aware of. Um, I, I don't know specifically what's happening. Is building. there a reason why it wasn't after I uh, requested that something needs to take place? Is there a reason why? I wasn't just speaking just to, uh, to hear myself speak. Is there a reason why? Well, there's we have to, we would have a lot of work to do in terms of getting estimates, and we do have some we could share with the board. We can get more estimates. We're talking millions of dollars. Millions of dollars based on what? Carpeting alone, uh, roofing alone, windows alone. Um, we'd be in the millions of dollars. We've looked into these projects. We have to decide where, how much money, I just heard Mr. Patterson say, are we throwing good money after bad? We're about to build new buildings, so we have to decide how much money we want to invest in these new schools. Ceiling tiles, absolutely, we can put up. We can continue to put them up. I know we continue, we put them up, there's a leak, we put them up, there's a leak, and so we're just you know, kind of chasing the tails until we get this done, and I know Mr. Myers has shared with the board the estimate for the roofs. I have not heard back from the board's position on that. If that's something we want to spend money on, we need to discuss that further. So it's, there's a lot of ground to be covered. Lockers alone to get painted are tens of thousands of dollars. So we just have to decide. If the board is telling me this is where we want to put our money, I will be more than happy to, to take care of these, but please be prepared for million dollar estimates. I, I'll be glad to do the work. Well, my thing is this. After requesting at the last meeting, I had expected some type of something to, 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 to look and 
to the request or come back with an answer. I just did not expect for nothing to be looked into. So when a boy, a board uh, 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 asks for something, it should not be overlooked or pushed under the rug based on request. There should be some action need to be taken to fulfill the request that's given. Now, tens and thousands of dollars for the spray, spray painting. It can, all lockers don't have to be spray painted and, 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 and done. But I have done some electrostatic spraying of lockers before and it never took tens and thousands of dollars. So we may need to look at the, uh, 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 where we're getting these prices from, depending on what, what we're looking at. Now, does all the carpet need to be replaced at the Milk High School and those places? Maybe not, but there are certain areas of that high school that need to be looked into. Or look, or, or, or at least get some quotes and get something brought back for a discussion. Now, if it comes for the roofing, okay, the roof may not, if, if there's some patching, if there's some, some, some ceiling, if there's something that can be done in the meantime, not to say that we have to replace the whole entire roof, but wherever there's issues, major leaks, major areas that that's an issue, there's some patching and things can be done. If, if, if there's some assistance that needs to be made, uh, uh, I'm willing to help to get some uh, uh, um, some quotes and some people to come in to for, for some estimates of patching the uh, roof. We need something done. James, if you don't need some assistance, I'm here to help assist you based on the building that I had to oversee, the new building that I had to oversee over in Richmond Heights. I'm willing to help do that if assistance is needed. But I need something done and moved on. Ms. Brownson, that's it for me. Yeah. I, I, I guess I'm on the same line that I believe that our children should be in a clean, safe environment. And when roofs are leaking, carpet is nasty, and they have they don't have nice looking lockers. That to me is not. I used to tell my kids, if you unsafe, I'm unsafe. And I'm not going to be unsafe on my job. And I meant that. So they should not be unsafe in the building. They need a clean, warm environment so that they can learn. That's what we're here for.
and it's gonna serve children part of the time. But where they are every single day, all day, and we are going to allow that to happen, I think that's what we're looking at. Sure, this, this emergency is really not my emergency. That's just how I feel about it, it's not. But I do worry about the storm coming and there's gonna be buckets all around the kids. <coughs> water leaking every place, or we have to close an area because the floor is so I, I think that's what it is. It's not that the gym floor, the construction is not important, but what's really the priority here? And I think that's what's on our right now. I realize that we have come to a point where we do need the floor, and I do agree with Mr. Stevens. I think a lot of this that's happening now should have happened before, and we should have seen this way before under the, uh, the last business manager. I think it was something that was not taken care of and was not addressed. We got other issues that we need to address now that are just as important as this gym floor. In fact, to me, this is not priority for me as a board member because it's being used part of the time where our children are being abused every single day. So I think it's the cost and what we have placed priority on. And I, I, just, I just have some concerns about that. I know we have to deal with it. I, I agree with uh, Ms. Patterson that I would like to make decisions just like that because we certainly haven't made one on the roof, and on the floor, and on the lockers, and on air purifiers or whatever for our children to even close schools where they're not educated. So I don't want to walk away from here tonight with people thinking that we don't want our children to play basketball in the Bedford gym. That's, the, that's, the, that's really not the major concern. So I'm not even going to hear it when people start saying that because that's not true. Again, sports over academics to me and a place where kids are safe. Yeah, if I could add, um, you know, I know we're talking a lot about sports teams, but this room, this is used every day for gym classes, and we forgot, we haven't mentioned that, but they've been without a gym, so they've been using an auxiliary gym, but kids do have class in there every day, so I do, I do, and I understand where you're all coming from, I truly do, but we, we've neglected to do that, I mean, I know you know that now that I say it, but well, we have I do that, I do that. gym classes for when we can, so but there's some place else where you can. Right, they have all the gym classes. Uh, I know that they've had to make some curricular adjustments, um, but yes, they, right now, I think if, if there are some courses there, we would have to talk to Mr. Thompson there about some what now? There are some courses being um, taken and utilized in the auxiliary gym, but we would definitely need to talk to Mr. Thompson about how, in the phys ed department, about the adjustments that are being made, um, because that is a smaller space, and so not everybody all the courses can go there long term, but it is definitely a short term fix for the health PE department. So we would need to talk to him about the specifics and how much and how much combined we can continue to go on for. It's like how we have a room though, but talking to a former phys ed teacher, the weather has been really nice. You can take your kids outside on the football field, on the track, Behind the stadium, you know, you use what is available to you. I mean, the weather, I mean, up until last week, we had 70 and 80 degree weather. So the gym was really not a factor. Kids rather be outside than stuck in the gym. So, you know, that to me is unexcusable, um, not a good excuse to tell me that, you know, they, use, they need the gym because there are other facilities in this district that they could use right here on campus. Yes, Ms. Patterson, that's one reason. I just want to clarify why I stated that we would need to talk to Mr. Thompson about the specifics of how they adjusted their curriculum. I also do, I, I don't want to come across as saying that that's not being done because I feel like the staff has done a great job of making adjustments, but I believe that we definitely have to talk to Mr. Thompson about what those adjustments are and what they need to our children long term. I thank you, Dr. Johnson, for reminding me that Please the classes, the gym classes yeah, are right. occurring in the yeah, I So I appreciate that. I thought we knew, I mean, gym classes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I appreciate that. <coughs> okay. Ms. Carson, one other thing, and, and I, I, I agree with all three with regards to the buildings and the leaks and, and 110%. But when we're looking at this, you know, half a million 
I just look at it like, yes, we the schools need fixing. But we've already approved 400. The biggest part we're looking at now is that enhancement or, or the change order for the floor itself. So I, I'm, I, I just want to get this going. I, I realize the gym is the most important thing in this, but it is utilized. Every high school has a very nice gym that's utilized a lot by a lot of things. Art shows we have here. I, I mean, so. Um, I, I just don't want to see at least the floor get put up in order to, that's just my opinion. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, I need a motion. Second. Second. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, actually, Mr. Harrison, what I did is since we took the items off, I have the language here that someone could read to make a motion uh, if this is the one that they want to take to the gym floor. So if someone wants to motion that. There's each one there, but if it's just the gym one you want to act on, there's one. additional floor prep work and materials to prepare the gym for the new floor, additional floor prep not to exceed $49,014.
my thing is this. The reason why, and not that I don't want to, the reason why I said no is because once again, I've already expressed myself regarding the existing facilities. And I said I was not going to vote anything at all pertaining to this con to, the, to this new construction until I see some movement regarding what, we, what we're facing right now. That's why I did what I did. And I meant that. So, I'm gonna see some movement regarding our new, I mean our facilities, our existing facilities in, in order for me to feel comfortable in this.
make it ours is what I'm saying. That's what yeah, if you if you want to make additions or changes to any of the policies that NEOLA presents you, you have the option to do that. It may or may not be warranty by NEOLA. And I would always, I'm not an attorney, but I would always recommend that uh, you have your uh, attorney look at any, any that you would make to the NEOLA company to make sure that it adheres to the law.
recording it and playing it afterwards, but since you said that the last two have okay. been live. So, so I just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that we're okay with that, right? We can do that. I think we have to put it in our policy, don't we, Jeff? We, not the live streaming portion, but if we're gonna allow pub public comment, that I think was the nuance. If people, if we're gonna allow people to call in, we have to put that in our policy. Okay, because I know I saw it yeah. somewhere. Yes, we right. Do this, and I think right. right, we can't until we change our policy. Okay, so, so I think it's gonna be now. Can I compliment the board because I think you're really being I think you're really being forward thinking because I the law the law law change on July thirtieth. So I think this and this is one because if you want to look over that, obviously not now, but I thought I did put the option in here for online because I heard the conversation. I think there was a question about should the person too, I think it came up uh yeah. It was something about calling or something. Yeah, it's the last, it's the actual last option on the whole policy. It says that they can call us. It says the board permits individuals to attend meetings remotely to participate in public participation. Subject to blah, 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 the same rules kind of thing. So even if they're participating remotely, they would still need to register the fact that they want to speak to the board right. prior to the meeting. Right. Exactly. And that was the challenge we were having. Some yeah. people calling in as the meeting's going, like it's hard to coordinate that. So that's when we ask for them in advance. But it doesn't have to be 24 hours, but at least in advance before the meeting starts. Because if after we start the meeting, that becomes a challenge to, you know, all of a sudden try to patch someone in. <coughs> so that was the only, that was the hiccup, that, the only one that I think we saw. But I think we addressed it today. Any other questions for Mr. Pat? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Okay, moving right along. We don't have to vote on any of that. No, we do not. 2.03, presentation of special ed directive. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Patterson. We have uh, Mrs. Tomko here this evening and a couple members of her team. Um, obviously, special education is a very large topic and very encompassing, so uh, Mrs. Tomko and I sat and tried to anticipate what we felt would be useful information for you, even though she probably could talk for three hours, but I told her 20 to 30 minutes. <laughs> so um, she's going to, to try to consolidate as much as she can. So Mrs. Tomko, if you will, and ladies, if you are going to introduce yourself, you have to go to the microphone as well, too, so when it's time. Thank you. Good evening, board. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, I'm Katie Tomko, Director of Special Education, and here with me I have two uh, wonderful ladies who then in addition to our special education department. And I'm gonna go ahead and introduce them and give them a minute to introduce themselves and share with you, um, you know, what their role is in our department and what they've been working on. Uh, we have Sheena Hill, who is our special education compliance coach. And she has been an intervention specialist in the district for quite a few years now. So I'm gonna let her go first and she can tell you a little bit about what she's been doing. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for having us. Um, my name is Sheena Hill, and I, in the past 13 years, was a teacher as an intervention specialist at Carroll Wood. And so this is my first year um, in a new role with the district. And as Katie said, I am the special education compliance coach. And what my role is, is basically to um, make sure we, as a district, are in compliance with IEP writing processes and timelines. So all of the teachers in the district, they su submit drafts of their IEPs to me before the IEP meeting in an effort to make sure we're in compliance and that um, parents receive drafts, parents and guardians receive drafts in a timely fashion where they can review the drafts before the meeting. I, in addition to that, I support the teachers in writing IEPs and field a lot of questions in terms of um, the process and timelines and things like that. And um, just work with the teachers regarding writing IEPs and just making sure that they're in compliance. And then we also have Jenny Willis, who is 
our student services specialist, and she comes to us with 27 years of experience at Tech. And I'm going to go ahead and let her um, introduce herself. Good evening, board. Uh, my name is Jenna Polis, and I'm the new student service specialist, and I appreciate the opportunity for working in the district. Um, what my role is, um, I, I have many things that I'm learning. Um, but one of my, the first role that I started with was working with um, the classroom. Um, one of my biggest assignments when I first got here, I went over to Husket in one of the middle school uh, classrooms in the EV classroom and um, assisting the teachers and the, um, the paras and them with um, developing structure and routine and accountability uh, for the students. Um, it, was, it was a rough start for the teachers and so when I came in, um, really just laying down some plans, um, down some um, classroom management techniques and social skills training and different ways to really get the kids to buy into the changes. Uh, right now the kids are pushing back on changes because right now, you know, kids do like, even though they do like discipline, but they also like to play and, and have fun and not do work sometimes, right? It seems to be, sometimes it is more entertaining for them as children. Um, so just really trying to change and shift that, that their mindset and help them develop the skills that they need to focus on their lessons, get along with people, and, and make good choices in school. Um, so I spent about three weeks doing that. I also been called to the high school to help um, two of the classrooms, uh, a student over at Columbus, a third grader, and another student, a 10th grader at, at the high school. So I've been in classrooms at different buildings doing that part of my job. Another part of my job is in this building and doing a lot of the, the EMS paperwork and, and making sure all that documentation is correct. And um, also participating in meetings, IEP meetings, metro station meetings, planning meetings. And all that encompasses with just making sure that we are following policy and procedures and, and making sure that we are um, you know, on point to what, what we have to get done. So I know there's a lot more responsibilities that um, uh, Katie's going to teach me and show me, but I've definitely um, gotten my feet wet, um, and I'm excited for the challenge. All right. So in terms of the vision for the special education department, and this is something that I continue to um, impress upon when we have conversations, Making, making sure that we're providing instruction to all students in a caring, inclusive manner within their least restrictive environment. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, later. So the first thing in regards to the budget, um, we have two different sections of the budget, IDA B, which is the grant funded budget and general fund. And through our IDA budget, we provide instructional materials, family community engagement, classroom furniture, curriculum, sensory tools and supports. Contracted services are also provided out of this budget, along with personnel and professional development. In regards to the general fund budget, many of our tuition services for our out-of-district placements and our um, nursing health services are provided out of this fund. So in general, our staffing, we have 57 intervention specialists in the district, six school psychologists, four occupational therapists, six speech and language pathologists, one physical therapist, and a physical therapy assistant. So some overall general um, information regarding our students. We have 536 students which equates to 19.23% of our student population who are identified as students with disabilities. When we look at the overall breakdown of disability categories, this has stayed um, fairly consistent over the years with um, some minor fluctuation. Overall though, we have a breakdown of autism, 10.54%, students with intellectual disabilities at 7.9%, Developmental delay, 4.35%. Emotional disturbance, 729 
students with multiple disabilities at 3%, OHI minor at 28.06%, specific learning disabilities at 29%, and speech and language at 7.35. We have 24 students placed out of district. Um, those are placements that have been determined by the IEP team and do not include other out of district placements for other reasons. And some of those placements include re-education services, PEP, Passport, Education Alternatives, Kids Link, and the Monarch School. So what do our services look like in the district? And this is where I spoke about a student-specific um, least restrictive environment at the beginning. So as you can see, the arrows really are conducive to the movement that can happen for um, a student's service. So obviously our goal is to serve um, as many students as we possibly can within the regular education classroom. However, we know that there are other students who need some more significant support, and so that is called what's a, a resource room, um, somewhere where they, they can go to get additional instruction and additional support throughout the course of the day, to a self-contained classroom, which is where they spend their entire day, typically with one, maybe two teachers in the classroom, and then a separate facility, which is, are those out-of-district placements. And again, we look for that movement. Kids who require a more restrictive setting, we always look to provide the supports and services in order to move them back into um, a lesser restrictive environment. So for parent and family engagement, um, one of the things that we have started to do within the district um, and are currently working on are welcome binders for families. What we have found is typically the process is overwhelming for families as they start down this road and they're unclear of the language and unsure of what to um, look for. So we are creating welcome binders when a student is identified um, for the first time and we are organizing those binders for the families to show them what are the important um, pieces of paperwork that they should keep for their child as well as um, you know, teaching them the pieces and parts in terms of what to look for when they receive information from their child's teacher. We're also going to offer a parent night um, to provide families an opportunity um, to meet me and to also receive feedback and input from their experiences in the schools. So in terms of compliance, you heard a little bit about that earlier. Um, just as an update, we have been working on and have clearance from a corrective action plan that is a systemic corrective action plan, um, and we are in the final stages of a completion of a corrective action plan for a student. We've also completely, um, successfully completed a preschool desk audit uh, that was completed about a week ago. And we are currently in the process of an on-site review with the Ohio Department of Education. Um, and that right now is through PEP and Passport. And um, that, inter that inter information funnels down into the district in terms of uh, responsibilities that we'll have moving forward. So the goals for the year, um, the big three building relationships, assessing our procedures and practices within the district, and exploring service delivery options. So again, looking at uh, making sure, you know, I have had regular contact with the buildings, um, getting feedback from staff, from administration, from families, um, holding regular department meetings. We are also assessing um, staff strengths and weaknesses, and exploring curriculum needs for our students, and reviewing our compliance procedures. We're also looking at assessing um, service delivery models and their effectiveness to see what changes we need to make moving forward and exploring options to provide specialized services to students um, specific to autism and significant disabilities. And that is all I have for you.
well, right now I'm looking at a facility, looking at our facilities that are available, and if that's not gonna work, um, I certainly can add additional nights or um, push it back. I would think that you would add this information out to our parents. If November 10th is in two weeks. Well, some of this has just been decided on in terms of finding an, finding an evening that's available based on um, what we're offering with So you're just giving us information here that you have not, you know, this is on paper. This is paper to me. You have not done it, anything. Have you been in the buildings yet? Yes, I have. Which building? I've been in all of the buildings. You've been in all the buildings. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said regular contact with buildings. How regularly do you, are you in the buildings? I'm in the buildings weekly, and I have contact with staff and admin in, on a daily basis. <coughs> self-contained classrooms do we have? We have two at Central, we have two at Glendale, we have two at Columbus, or three at Columbus, I apologize, two at Carrollwood, three at Heskett with a resource room, and we have five, well four self-contained at the high school and one resource room. Of action plan? Yes. Um, that was completed in September, yes. That yep. was initiated back and in And what spring. was said? What was said? We so you so when we received the notification in the spring, um, a corrective action plan was developed and the requirements within that corrective action plan then had to be submitted in September. So I submitted all that documentation in September and, and what they you received back is just is a statement saying you've been cleared. data 
to determine the, the, the root cause and what things we can do to uh, remedy, you know, why we are why we are in this position. So is it still 10 days? They, they, they can only be suspended for 10 days and then you have to have a hearing? Yep, you have to have a manifestation hearing. Manifestation mm -hmm. hearing, okay. Mm -hmm. And so are they doing that? Yes, everyone is um, in compliance with those policies and procedures. What we're really looking at is how do we remediate that behavior before we get to that point? What can we do beforehand to make sure we're not getting to those 10 days? And, and the manifestation here is the, the disability, the cause of their actions or not? That's, that the, determined? that's the decision that's being made okay. in that meeting, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's how you're addressing that. Sure. There's it's twofold. So um, part of it is the compliance piece, and that's where Jenny and Sheena really play an important role in making sure, um, you know, in terms of the actual like paperwork and compliance piece, you know, we're doing what we need to do. Um, but then the second piece of that is again making sure that we're being proactive. So not only um, MTSS as a building, so really looking at our PBIS structures. Um, looking at how we're addressing students with behavior, but then also looking at, at the individual students. So there are things that you can do building wide, but then we also obviously have to do specific things that are addressing the individual student needs. And so my next question in regards to that is this, do we have like a universal screener that we're using for behavior so that, you know, I, I wanna know what's, what does the data show that our children need? Sure. Because you gotta know what they need before you try to address it. Yeah. And so if you have, uh, and then once we do it, and you, you're saying a, a lot, you're talking to the staff. Are we sending them to some PDs or people coming out to mm -hmm. share with them? Mm -hmm. Are you meeting weekly with them? And, and I'm, gonna, I'm asking these questions because I, I've been hearing some, not some good stuff about what's happening with our children mm -hmm. uh, with disabilities, and especially at one of our schools. Actually, two. So, so I know there's a lot to be done, mm -hmm. and we need to really look at our social emotional learning. So I just asked you one question, they asked you another one. And so are you and working okay. with uh, Kenneth Evers since she's over social emotional learning? You guys should be working hand in hand. Yep. This is just my opinion on <coughs> developing something and building those relationships. And I know that you, we should anyway, be working with our staff but we have to prepare our staff to know what to look for and then how to handle those things. And I'm really concerned about that because it should not be happening. You have all these folks here. I do just wanted to wear my compliance person. Is she, wait, someone was saying, I forgot me, but saying all these things they are doing. Mm -hmm. Is one person going to one, all these schools doing this and we're having all these behaviors? We really need to look at what's going on with our children. We need to look at that universe. So the universal screener was adopted um, this fall um, at our at our PD. It's called the DESA. It is a universal screener, and it has not been administered yet. We had just had the PD on it, so all the staff was just recently trained. So that will roll out. Um, it's a benchmarking assessment, just like you would with iReady or any other um, academic uh, benchmarking tool or universal screener. So that's done three times a year. So that will be done at the the winter period. Um, so we will gather some more information from that at that point, but we also utilize a, many other pieces of information beyond the universal screener. So um, obviously we're looking at, you know, students' academic performance, their attendance, their behavior in the building. Um, there's lots of other, other variables um, or data points that we use to determine, you know, a student's need. Um, I do agree that that the social emotional piece is a huge priority. Um, I think anybody that has spoken with me or has worked with me since I've been here understands that that is my passion as well. Um, and it is a huge priority for me. 
Uh, I definitely work with all of the directors, not only Mr. Elder, um, but Ms. Willis, as well as um, Mr. Waters, because we all have a hand in the social emotional um, learning component. It's not, it is not a silo. Um, we definitely have to use each other because it, it feeds into all of our, our departments. Um, so yes, we spent a lot of time talking about how, what we can do moving forward, how we can revamp um, some of the good things that we actually already have going on. Um, but just, you know, just like we know kids are coming back from COVID, um, they've not been in school for about a year and a half, so we're teaching them how to do school again. So we are certainly seeing a, an increase in behavior as well as many other schools um, across the state. So it, it wasn't necessarily, um, I think, a surprise to anybody, but it certainly is a way, you know, it, it certainly um, has taken us some time to figure out how do we address all of the needs that are occurring. But we are certainly working on that and addressing it. What's the plan here? Tell me at the end. What's your plan working with the SEO, with, with Mr. Elder? Well, I just need to hear that one. Yeah, so so I don't, so there's a couple different things. So I don't and I'm oversee SEO. Because he's over this, so yes, I don't oversee SEO. But what I do do is work um, in collaboration with him as well as our teams in our buildings, as well as um, this Ms. Ms. Willis, um, who has been a huge asset and help um, in terms of coaching um, teachers on how to intervene. Um, so the, the plan has been, you know, to continue the, um, well, to implement the DESA in the winter, which is our, the universal screener, but then also to continue utilizing the zones of regulation, which was a PD that was provided to staff in the fall. Um, we've also provided um, in the fall an SEL and UDL PD for staff. So again, continuing to re uh, reinforce those strategies and interventions that were um, talked about at that PD. And then working on individual plans for kids. So um, then going beyond just what we do in the buildings and in the classrooms and developing specific um, responses to certain kids depending on what they need. When you say staff, are you just talking about the special ed department or are you talking about the entire staff? Entire staff. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. How are your progress monitoring these things, these things? They're going to the PDs, mm -hmm. um, Ms. Willis is showing up every place in all these buildings, one Ms. Willis is showing up with all these behaviors that are going on. How are you progress monitoring what's going on? Who's meeting with, who's doing that? Mm -hmm. So um, that should really um, occur along with like with our VLTs and DLTs, and we're looking at um, the discipline data. So that's a good way to, um, again, when you're looking from an overarching big picture, you're taking the discipline data um, and breaking that down and identifying where the needs are. And then again, that's a more global big picture, where in the buildings then we're looking at specific classrooms or specific specific kids, so that information will be, um, would look different. And what role does the principal play in that, the accountability of these things happening? I'm just curious. Who's your meeting with them? Can you, I didn't, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I just wanted to know, what's, what are your thoughts or your um, involvement with the uh, principal when it comes to that, this progress monitoring and what's going on in their building? Mm -hmm. so, so are you meeting with them? Are you yes. meeting with the principal? Yes. Are you meeting with them or Ms. Willis? No, I, I also meet with them. Um, every department has, you know, their own, um, I guess, schedule, I would say, of when they, they have meetings and um, meet with their buildings. Uh, Ms. Mrs. Willis and I both share um, elementary and secondary meetings, so um, if I need to share anything within that, I do. I also just meet regularly and have conversations with the administrators in the building, which you know, based on their schedules during the day is much more effective. Um, it's also a way for us to um, really break down and have the conversations about what's happening in the buildings. So, you know, they're not always necessarily like regular scheduled meetings um, or big meetings that we have. It's the conversations that are really making the difference in terms of how do we change the mindset and how do we look at um, behavior differently. Talking about this, Miss Willis, or the no, there's two. <laughs> I know, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Are you talking about the 
Are you talking about this Ms. Willis or other Ms. No, I was talking about um, the other, the curriculum director, okay. Mrs. Willis. Okay, so you have to specify. Um, so yes, yeah. yeah, I apologize. Thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So I, I have to just get back to this. So sure. So when you're analyzing, um, uh, actually collecting this data from these different sources mm -hmm. of where the behavior occurred, and so are you looking at any visuals or whatever that are being written. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to know the principal in, uh, involvement in that because there's a lot of stuff going on in these bills here mm -hmm. that is really upsetting to me. And so you have this data, you're doing all this stuff, you collect Well, it's not data. just me, so, you know, it well, wouldn't, okay. okay, not just yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to know the principal's <coughs> involvement in this. Mm -hmm. Once we collect that data, we find out where these incidents are happening because we're writing a lot of referrals and we are in trouble for it because this is it, this program black people are being kicked out of school, black kids. Mm -hmm. So I want to know uh, the principal's involvement. So mm -hmm. you are talking with the principal. You have identified where it's happening, mm -hmm. who it's happening with. So I just want to know these meetings. When you're talking about a schedule, you meet with a principal. This is urgent. This emergency is my emergency because I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to know their involvement. How how are yeah, are so they going through these same trainings too? Yes, yes. Are they listening? Are they looking at their staffing? Are they really looking at where these incidents are occurring? And with particular staff and with these type of behaviors, are these behavior? It's just yeah. Tell me again. I want to hear it again. So through the MTSS meetings in the buildings, that's yeah. where the principals are involved. And so they are hearing that information. They are involved and in, um, actively involved in supporting those plans. I think I had one more. Oh, here. I want to know, you were, you were, you, you list the, the student data um, as far as this building breakdown. How are we compared to comparing to the state um, numbers. Yeah. I wanted to see that. I actually had seen it and I wanted you to explain it. I'm surprised that you didn't present that as one of your slides because I, I know this, too. I know the state mm -hmm. did. I know I wanted you to explain it. Mm -hmm. I, I saw it already. I mm -hmm. made sure when it came out, I saw it. And I just wanted to know, um, to, I wanted you to explain that part, but you didn't really know. But anyway, how are we comparing to what the state averages are? Um, overall, the state average is 15%. So we are at 19% um, overall students with disabilities in terms of the breakdown. Um, we are, you know, pretty similar within within a range. I would say that we are higher in terms of identifying students with um, other health impairments and a little bit lower with students with specific learning disabilities. But other than that, it is um, it's pretty comparable. And that's in all all the buildings. Yeah, that's an overall um, picture of the, of the entire district. Of the entire district. Yep. Break it down building by building. I, I can get that information for you. I don't have okay. that on the okay. top of my head. I can see that. One more question about your compliance uh, coach. You said you pro provided support to the staff. Yes. What does that support look like? We've got one compliance coach. Is this coach just for high school or for? For the entire district. For the entire district. Correct. And providing support to mm -hmm. the staff and we have uh, how many kids mm -hmm. so we have 530 so she is versus mm -hmm. <laughs> providing support mm -hmm. to the staff what does she, that support look like she is coach? doing a fabulous job and it has been very well received um sheena is providing specific feedback to staff on their um iep so when they send her their iep she goes through it um, she sends them her the feedback and corrections that she would like to see made on it. Um, she also goes to the buildings and has conversations with staff about um, you know where they could improve or if they have specific questions, why is she making that suggestion versus something else. Um, so there's been lots of good positive conversation in terms of why things are being done a certain way. Um, and then they implement that feedback and they you know make those corrections or changes and then they're able to then submit the draft to the family and be prepared for the IEP meeting. Are you available to the staff too for these children that the compliance coach may come? I, I, I'm hearing that a lot of staff is really struggling. 
they're struggling with how to deal with certain behaviors in buildings, and they're begging for help and support. Mm -hmm. We have one person, 530 some individuals that uh, have disabilities. Where are you? So I'm always, I have an open door policy. They contact me all the time, but it is not just Ms. Willis that is supporting the behavior. We have SEL teams, we have um, PBIS supports. You know, it's it's not just one person supporting an entire district. It has, it can't be. Um, it has to come from, you know, the, the, the building and the ground up. Um, it can't just be one person coming in. Mrs. Willis is really just there to um, help very specific situations or specific students because we have a network within each of the buildings to provide um, provide additional support for, for behavior in the buildings. Are you pleased with what you see? Say the building? Again. Are you pleased with what you see in the building? We can always make changes. Always make changes. Yep. Could we make one when people call on you and call on that department, maybe that you could be readily available, especially <coughs> when it's an emergency for the staff? I'm sorry. Could you make yourself readily available to some of the people? I hear there's a lot of stuff going on in a couple of those schools, and people are begging for help because they don't know what to do. I have, um, I, I don't know if you're talking about specifically about me, but I have provided, um, well, I shouldn't say me, but I have helped establish um, some very strong support plans where people were struggling um, and have been available and provided that support. My staff have my cell phone number. Um, the admin have my cell phone number. They call, they text. I am available at, at all times. Um, obviously, I can't always drop everything to get to somebody maybe um, the moment that they're calling, but I certainly get back to people, um, and I have made myself available. They know they, I have an open door policy. They can stop in. They can um, you know, return phone calls, texts, calls, emails. Um, I'm in the buildings. We have Sometimes regular people meetings. just need to see your face and see you in the building and actually see the behavior. Not so much, you can check the IEP. I've seen 150 of them just recently. Yes, so I'm my saying. background is behavior, so saying, I am I just, I just absolutely if you, see your, if you can see yes. the behavior. Sometimes I you just absolutely need have seen to be yes. hands on and see it. Nothing written on a piece of paper. Yeah. I've been in the buildings. I've gotten down on the floor and worked with a student at Glendale who they were struggling with. Um, it's a mess that has kick. Pardon me? It's a mess that has kick. Uh, I've been addressing it. I've okay. been All putting right. a lot of supports in place to support that building. Thank you. Ms. Hill, do you sit in on the IEPs with the parents and the, and the staff?
I don't oversee federal courts. That's with Mr. Elder. That's Mr. Elder. Would you find out from Mr. Elder? Sure. How many final courts are there? I'm sorry. Everybody knows what a final court is. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mr. Kennedy, do you know what a final court is? Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Tomkowitz. I know you are working extremely hard, and you have done a phenomenal job. I know, Mrs. Tomkowitz, you've been here not even three months, and so for you to field all those questions is amazing. You did a great job, and I do appreciate everything you guys have been doing and recognizing the needs in our district. And what Mrs. Boynton says is right. We have a lot of work to do. Our behaviors are not where we want them to be, and that's what I was going to address in my informal, actually. But thank you again all for being here. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're at the superintendent's report. Oh, you know what, Mrs. Pettison, I have a couple items off to the left there, if I may. We have under my reports, and then I can do my informal if you don't mind. So I have the 3.01 we've already talked about with the first readings, so we don't need to do anything on that. It's just to call your attention to it. 3.02 is the approval of the use of the school facilities by Seoul and City Schools. And just to update you, number one, I appreciate you entertaining this. They are very eager to use our pool. We will actually make quite a bit of money if you were to permit this. They are renovating their pool and are really stressed and need to get this started. So they will be paying us $100 an hour for the use of that pool. So that is what I'm asking you to vote on this evening. And also the approval of the overnight field trip for our students of promise with Mr. Colbert. Again, I spoke with Mr. Ivory himself and just asked about the time frames and that I expressed that Mr. Ivory is kind of new to working with me, but I don't work with last minute requests. But they had been talking about it, but I think they firmed up everything not all that long ago. And they had extra money in their budget. Normally they take a fall trip to Washington, D.C., but because they had extra money due to COVID, they want to take our students to San Francisco for a week. And I really don't want to deprive our children of that. I always think about, you know, just because due to adults, I don't want to deprive them of this opportunity. Thank you to go see these different universities. So thank you. I'm asking you for your approval on that as well. Okay. I need a motion for 3.02, approval of Solon Schools to use our facility. It's been moved by Mrs. Boynton. Second. Second by Mr. Kennedy. Any questions? Hearing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Boynton. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. Aye. Mr. Stevens. Aye. Mrs. Patterson. Aye. 4-0. Thank you, board. Now I need a motion for the approval of the overnight field trip. So moved. It's been moved by Mr. Stevens. Aye. Second by Mrs. Boynton. Any questions? I just got a comment on that. And I agree it's a great opportunity for the young kids. But as was stated, this is a trip to San Francisco that we are getting two weeks before we're supposed to leave. To me, that's unacceptable. All right. We just, you know, Mrs. Patterson brought up to let parents know about meetings in advance. But we're getting a trip to San Francisco two weeks. So who's under the gun here? This is planned. I mean, it's been planned for a while. I saw the itinerary. It wasn't something put together in a few days. So who is it? You know, I know you spoke to Mr. Ivory, but this can't happen. You know, when we're sending kids across the country with, it's just, to me, that's just unacceptable. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mr. Stevens. Aye. Mrs. Boynton. Aye. Mr. Kennedy. Aye. Mrs. Patterson. Aye. 4-0. Thank you, board. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. We're going to have to stop for doing last-minute stuff. We don't have advance notice. We're going to just have to let it slide. I assure the board that we will not be doing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Monday, um, but the reason being is we don't have school on the second, and because we're afraid doing a Friday or Saturday night it would interfere with um, football and sports. So we're going to do a kids movie first at 6:30, so it's early enough for kids to get home, and then um, for the high school kids, they can um, have a have one right after that, kind of a scarier movie. But um, we went back and forth about the movie selection today, so we landed on a couple movies. But we will be putting that out. Um, no one's 